<laughs> oh yeah. I can feel a little bit of vibration coming on. You thought Microsoft Flight Simulator was addictive. Try using the force feedback, yo. This is pretty special. I mean, why is every flight peripheral company not doing this? Racing Simulation has had it for decades. Why is it so scarce in flight simulation? Simionic sent this force feedback yoke to me for review, and I've spent the last four weeks putting it through its paces and finding out its quirks and figuring out if force feedback is even needed in flight simulation. Now, there's a lot to unpack in this video, so grab yourself a coffee or a beer and let's go through the Simionic force feedback yoke. Makes sense to start with what you get in the box. Now the whole thing is packaged very well, which is a great first impression. You get a power brick, USB cable, control wheel and the yoke base itself. Pretty simple, nothing out of the ordinary, it's pretty much what you would expect. The design is very simple, well, you know, it's a box. and. To me, that's a good thing. At this sort of level, you want something that has very subtle design features, making it easier to work in with existing setups. The base is quite long, coming in at 32.5 centimeters, but the width and the height are quite compact, as you can see here. It's got this big semionic logo just across the top, which looks like it's vinyl laser cut. There are no buttons on the base apart from the power switch at the back, but there is a trim switch and four momentary switches along with a four-way hat switch on the right hand side and that's plenty. I love the simple design and it fits nicely with the setup. It also looks good next to the honeycomb throttle. It'll probably look good next to anything if I'm completely honest. The yoke control wheel looks very much like a Cessna 172 yoke which is perfect for GA flyers and looking at the way it fits to the shaft which you saw earlier it looks like it could have a capability to have the control wheel swapped in and out for a different design in the future if they ever released another one. Now I'm going to quickly cover the basic features. Now quite simply this yoke will give you feedback for pitch and roll axis now the pitch has 40 newtons, that's linear newtons, and the torque has two newton meters for roll. Now it has a 145 millimeter pitch range, which is also amazing. I'll touch on that later. And a 180 degree roll axis. So both pitch and roll are just what you would get or experience on a real aircraft. The yoke base is full metal, the shaft is metal, and the control wheel is steel insert with a plastic casing. It's pretty simple overall. The yoke will simulate effects like turbulence, wheel vibrations, landing gear, suspension effects, as well as a few others that I will go through in more detail soon. That leads me on to the build quality. Now this is very good, but also slightly lacking a little bit in places. The build quality of the metal box of the yoke is, is great. There's no denying that. It's got a bit of weight to it, it's solid, the mounting points are very solid. It looks very industrial, like a proper professional feeling semi-yoke. The power supply, the switch in the back, all very high quality. On the other hand, the yoke control wheel, look, it's not, it's not that it's bad, it just doesn't match the it doesn't match the build quality of the base. The control wheel plastic, it creaks a little bit under pressure. And I actually think that if I didn't, if it, if it didn't creak, I probably wouldn't have noticed anything at all. And I wouldn't even be speaking to you about this. But I just think the plastic needs to be beefed up a little here. The trim switches are also not as good as the yoke base. But Look, they're not bad in any sense. However, the momentary buttons, they're like, they're beautiful. They're so satisfying to use. I'll pause for a second and give you some audio. With everything combined overall, the build quality is actually, it's very, very good. If you can get past a creek here and there from the yoke control wheel, then the whole unit is, you know, it's great. Mounting is super easy. It's four screws or bolts in each corner and that's it. You can see I've screwed mine to my wooden desk which is bolted to my Next Level Racing Flight Sim Pro. In a nutshell, it's extremely quick to mount and it's super solid. I now want to touch on the price. Now, this thing isn't cheap and it's 
probably out of reach for quite a few simulation enthusiasts. At 1,100 USD, it really has got a lot to make up for being in that sort of price bracket. But I'll fall back and say that nothing brilliant is ever cheap. And in this case, if you want something that will really or truly transform your sim, you know, you're gonna have to open your wallet. This leads me on to the, the, the software overview. The Yoke doesn't come with its own software. You need to buy this from XP Force, which is obviously an additional expense. And it's not expensive. It's like 10 UK pounds or something like that. It's old software that the likes of Microsoft Sidewinder Stick used to use. Now, like I said, I'm sure it's around 10 UK pounds. I did have installation issues at the start and I actually had to do a Windows 10 reinstall to fix it. Now, I have no idea what was causing the conflict, but after I did the reinstall, the software installed straight away, no issues. Now, I did send a ticket request to the makers of XP Force three, oh, it was probably more like four weeks ago. And well, look, I'm still waiting for a reply. So I do think software support might play a part in your decision of purchasing this based on the expense. Now, I did reach out to Simionic about this and they let me know that they are planning their own software in the future. Based on my experience here, I think that would be a great addition to the yoke. I'm now gonna go through my first impressions of flying. So I recorded this, you know, this was when, it first, when I first got a hold of it, which was like four weeks ago. I have already switched it on and it's calibrated itself, but I'm gonna switch it back off and uh, show you what that looks like. So to turn it off, you just alternate, you just press the, um, the trim switches in alternate direction. So that's it off, there's nothing, there's nothing on the control wheel. And to turn on and calibrate, press that. Away it goes. And it kind of looks like it's settled itself in that central position. <laughs> I hope this is this is cool. I really do. I've loaded the sim into um, Gold Coast Airport. I'm on the runway, basically ready to go. I'm going to keep it simple. All I need to do is pull the wheel brake off. I'm going to adjust the view a little bit. Like I can feel weight. I can definitely feel weight in the yoke. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's just get let's just get it going. Here we go. <laughs> oh yeah. I can feel a little bit of vibration coming on. It's getting stronger. And 60, 70 knots, the plane's gonna wanna go now. I'm just gonna hold it a little bit longer. Ah, uh, yep. A little lift. I don't know if you can see that on the camera but there was definitely some wheel vibration going on there. The gear is down right now and I can feel like there's vibration. Now, I don't know if that's engine vibration or that's coming from the gear. So let's, oh yep, there's a little, a little bit of a jolt there and it's went smooth. It's went smooth. <laughs> okay, just trying the pitch. Man, this is really hard to explain what I'm feeling, but it's like a sense of, um, it's like a sense of weight. Like, it really feels like I've got a, a hold of something physical in the sim. Um, yeah, there's a definite sense of weight there, absolutely. Love that. Let's try a hard bank. Oh yeah, I mean you can feel the the yoke starting to push on me there. And it's almost like I mean if you do the wrong thing here you can you can almost feel to me it feels like the the plane starts to run away from you almost. That's very, very cool. All right, I'm gonna take, take the plane up, get a little bit of altitude. Um, I actually need to trim this out a little bit. Right, okay. That was cool. It's gonna be hard to see this on camera, but 
so the pl I had to trim the plane down a little bit. Um, I'm still doing it now. And the, the yoke, there's backward pressure on a yoke. And as I trim it, as I'm trimming down, the pressure I'm having to apply on the yoke is lessening. Now that, that is amazing. Abs absolutely amazing. Is it just worth it just for that? That. Right, let's move on. Let's fly around a little bit. The pitch seems to give, at the moment, I haven't configured the software yet. The pitch is definitely giving me, feels like it's giving me more feedback than what roll is. Um, that may make some sense, bearing on that there's probably a larger surface area. Um, and the actual sim. This is amazing. I just don't get why there's not more of these on the market. I mean, surely, I think we'll try and take it back to Go Coast Airport for a landing. Might just try some rudder, heavy rudder input to see what, see what happens. Oh, there's a little bit of movement there. Yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it through the yoke. Oh yeah, there no, yeah, there it is, there it is. <laughs> I think this is the coolest thing I've ever um I've ever tried. Now that, uh, there's so much testing is gonna have to be done with this. Um I'm kinda of gobsmacked about how good this actually feels. Now, I'll need to go in and adjust in the software. I think the the roll needs a little bit more weight on it. And I haven't been fully through the software yet, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I can adjust in there. If you thought Microsoft Flight Simulator was addictive, try using the force feedback yoke. I'm kind of speechless in a way. And to be honest, I'm struggling for the words to really talk about or describe what I'm actually feeling. Other than the fact that I feel like I'm controlling something of, of substance in a way. There's weight to it. There's weight to it. There's consequences depending on the actions I take with the yoke. Right, let's try and get it back on the runway. I don't actually even know where the hell I am at the moment. Now, there is a subtle vibration. I don't know if that, that's hard to tell. I thought there might have been some sort of vibration, like a engine vibration. I don't think, I don't think there is. Could be, maybe it's more like the air traveling over the, over the wing. I'm not sure. Let's just put the gear down. And... <laughs> yeah, yep. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, the gear is down and I'm getting some subtle vibration through the yoke. It just disappeared a little bit there. Oh yeah, it's back. I mean, only doing 130 knots at the moment. I'm gonna have to slow down if I wanna land this thing. Right, I'm actually way too low. Man, the sense of, I keep going on about this, but the sense of weight, um, and the smoothness of it, it's quite impressive. I think one of the big things is there, there is no detent on the roll or the pitch. Um, you, can, you can feel the air traveling over the wings as you manipulate them. All right, let's slow down a little bit. Gears down. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. If the gear comes down, you get these uh, subtle vibrations. It must be the drag on the plane. I'm gonna go flaps as well, slow this thing down a little bit. Oh yeah, she, she is getting sluggish. Poppies are telling me I'm too high. Let's come down. Oh yeah, you get so much fine control with the, um, with the linear throw on this. 
Yeah, this is brilliant. Here we go. Coming down. Oh, I need to lose more speed. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you saw that on camera. But just just as I touched down, you know, the yoke kind of, and it was like the suspension from the gear. <laughs> that, that is cool. So you've just watched me genuinely flying with a yoke for the first time. Now, during this session, I did pause multiple times and make adjustments with the XP4 software, which is very easy to use. And I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what you can adjust. So on the, the first tab, you've got the assignments and you'll see semionic force Y should show up there if it's recognized. And then the ones you want to be concerned with are pitch axis and roll axis. Pitch and roll axis is, is really all you need to be looking at at the moment on your first setup. Now it starts to get a little bit more interesting. You're going to have stick friction, autopilot spring, pitch strength, pitch exaggeration, roll strength, and roll exaggeration. Your strength and your exaggeration. I'm not sure exactly how the yaw works yet, but the stick friction is just going to give you, it's going to, it's going to make it so that you need to apply a little bit more force for all the maneuvering. The pitch strength essentially is how much pressure you need to apply to change the pitch. The pitch exaggeration is about how quickly or um, how quickly the pitch effects will accelerate and the roll strength exactly the same it's about how much pressure you need to apply to the roll strength and the roll exaggeration the same again it's about how quickly those effects will be applied now the cool bit so you get wheel vibrations self-explanatory uh, wheel shimmy i think this applies to some planes on takeoff not sure exactly how that works. Um, you got the stick shaker, the alternate trim. Now, again, alternate trim, I'm not 100% sure what that's about. That's going to require some reading. Yoke follows autopilot. You got ground acceleration, gear bumpiness, which is one that I really love, gear turbulence, speed brake turbulence, and air turbulence, which you can see. I've got set quite high. For a, a better explanation of all of these or a fuller explanation, I will put a link in the description of the video. So if you want to deep dive into it, definitely go and check that out. So how does it feel overall? It's one of the bigger questions. This is going to be hard to explain, but look, I'll do my best to keep it as straightforward as possible. I'm going to start by saying that I'll never go back to a standard yoke, like ever. There's just such an expansive difference. Once you get this thing dialed in using the XP4 software, there, there's just no going back. The feeling of weight, um, turbulent air, the gear on the runway, the feeling of trimming the plane out using the pressure of the yoke is like magic. And when you get the settings right in the software, I think this will blow you away. It, it, it blew me away anyway. Look, it blew me away completely. Yes, the control wheel needs to be a bit higher quality. Now, when I say control wheel, I'm just talking about the plastic part of the wheel itself. But when you put the overall feel and feedback and sensation of actually flying, it completely negates any of the issues I have with the control wheel. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I do wish they'd maybe used a slightly stronger motor as I'm currently running XP Force at around 75% output for both pitch and roll, but look, that's, that's a very subjective thing to say. Now to help you gain a better understanding of the forces that I'm actually feeling, I'll show you some footage where I'll intentionally go a bit crazy. I'll let the, um, I'll take my hands off the control wheel and just let things go. Hopefully I can induce a little bit of movement into the yoke and just give you a better idea of what I might be feeling. Now, I want to go through my favourite parts of using the yoke. 
highlights in a sense. Landing just feels great. In fact, it makes it even more addictive. The feeling of weight, the, the feeling of just you're actually controlling something. There's no detent, like no detent at all, it's just like a real plane. The feeling of the plane waiting up when the flaps get extended is brilliant. The feeling of sluggishness or responsiveness when you're at low or high speeds, absolutely love it. Trimming out through the feeling of the yoke, now that could be the best thing. I know, I know it seems sort of minor, but I think that is actually a game changer. Now it's almost plug and play, it's real easy to get set up, get up and running with it. We always talk about layers of immersion and I'm gonna say that this is more than a layer. It's got a high quality base unit, it has 145 millimeters of travel, and it's close to what you get in a real plane, and I'll tell you, it makes a big difference in the sim. Now the things that could be changed or upgraded. The build quality of the yoke steering wheel could be a bit better. Maybe higher quality plastics or more mounting points to it. Now, I'm just talking about the plastic cover on the um, on the control wheel. It would be nice to see Semionic release their own software. I just don't want to rely on XP Force. So my final thoughts, like there's no getting away from the fact that this yoke's quite expensive and many people will consider it just too far of a stretch and I get it. I really do. This is not for someone new to flight sim and if you're new you want to be looking at something much more entry level. This is for someone who's deep into the world of sim and with a fair amount of experience. But for those that have a little money to burn and you're looking for, which I would say was a large leap in immersion, I mean it really is, there's no, there's no fluffing around here. It's quite amazing what it actually does. The feeling of weight, trimming the plane out, the turbulence, touching down on a runway is a big one. The feeling of the plane starting to run away from you when you make mistakes. Like I'm doing my best here to explain, but it really is one of those things that you have to try it to understand it. Again, going back, sorry, going back to what I was saying, if you have the cash, and you want to prioritize immersion, then this is a must buy. Just be aware that the software it runs on is not by Semionic, and the software support for me, at least to this time of making this video, has been non-existent. I will try and reach out to XP Force again and see what I get back. It's also important to know that I'm running on Windows 10 just for the software compatibility across the board. Windows 11 users may have a different experience with XP Force. Now, Semionic do offer a 15 day refund or exchange if you're not happy. And I think this speaks volumes to how confident they are that you will love it. I'll be revisiting this after six to eight months of use to let you know how it's going over a longer period and let you know how the yoke kind of stands the test of time through some, what well, I'll be giving it, pretty extreme use. So make sure you come back for that.